Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and on your screen you see the Blancpain 50 Fathoms No Radiations Limited Edition to 500 pieces. <music> Subscribe and hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Fasten your seatbelt for something new. We offer you the chance to win a priceless experience. New subscribers with an activated notification can win a watch manufacturer trip to Switzerland. Together with our partner Fontobel, we give away 10 all-inclusive trips worth a total of 50,000 Swiss francs. More details on watchadvisor.com. Furthermore, register there to double your chances to win. See you soon in Switzerland. The 50 Fathoms No Radiations come in a steel, comes in a steel case and the diameter of that steel case is, and you know that of course because it is a limited edition and you all know that Blancpain is only selling those 40.3 millimeter cases in limited edition. So it's 40.3 millimeters, but how big or how small are 40.3 millimeters? And I thought I'll show you this by bringing in my uh, 50 Fathoms in the original case or in the new original case, we have to say. One second and you will see the difference in size. Here they are both in your picture. On the left side, 40. Point three millimeters and on your right side 45 millimeters. So this is the 50 Fathoms as Blancpain is selling it now in that huge or bigger case depending on your taste and as we all know tastes are different and this is the version 40.3 millimeters that is sold only for limited editions as I just said and I know that many of you now will think why don't they sell this uh, smaller case uh, on a regular base, uh, put it into the collection and have this uh, smaller 50 Fathoms be um, available as a normal watch and not only as a limited edition. Um, yeah, good question. Um, this is something I can't answer you, but it is as it is. This is the watch you can buy on a regular base and uh, you know the small cases they have been doing um, the mill spec the first time in 2017 then the Barracuda then Hodinki did an old mill spec again and now comes the new uh, uh, comes another one called no radiations <laughs> The No Radiations uh, features a boxed sapphire crystal, so you can, yeah, there it is, and that's that perspective you should be able to see it. It's a boxed glass, so now if you have the watch perfectly on your screens from the side, I can also tell you the thickness is 13.23 millimeters, and the so-called lug-to-lug distance is 45 millimeters. So in case you are not aware what is a lug to lug distance, that's the distance being measured from one end of the lug to the other end and it's 45 millimeters. Let me continue turning the watch on your screen. You see that there is a see-through case button. There is an automatic movement um, powering this Blancpain. It's the 1151, caliber 1151. It's a free hertz movement and has a power reserve of 100 hours. So, um, quickly turn the case to the other side and you can see what is always being applied on those cases. Uh, that's the word Blancpain that is being engraved on the flank, on the left flank of the case. And this is part of the case design. And again, if I'm turning um, the watch, here you can see that boxed sapphire crystal that has, by the way, an anti-reflective treatment under, but not 
on on the outside. It's under on the underside, yes, but no anti-reflective treatment on the outside. There you go. Yes, here a little bit of playing around in the camera. And uh, also very nicely visible is the design of the basil. And um, yep, the inlay is a sapphire. That's part also of the design of the 50 Fathoms. So the inlay here, that's, an, uh, that's a stainless steel basil, of course, and there's an inlay and the inlay is made out of sapphire. And you will then, when we show you a loom shot, see how nicely all of these markings, including the numbers, are glowing at night and show you um, yeah, also the time you have decided to indicate on the basil when it is dark. So, um, there is a small crown protection. This is the last thing I wanted to show you. The watch also, of course, it's a screw down crown. Um, the case is waterproof 300 meters. And um, yes, there is a uh, crown protection being applied here. Oh, not being applied. Part of the, part of the case design, as you see here. And a bit difficult to show with all the reflections coming from my lights is the BGB Yehan Blancpain, the logo of uh, Blancpain that is uh, nicely visible here on the crown. And the crown is perfectly, yes, and this is something I like, you can use it with gloves. So the Design is done in a way that you can unscrew it, screw it, use it. Also with gloves, as you can see, can easily be done. And this is always a good sign. If you can manipulate the watch with gloves, tells you that uh, yeah, someone has been thinking of how um, design uh, and uh, yeah. So, so there is no folding clasp. Uh, there is a classical pin buckle. And that beautiful, because uh, beautiful, why do I say beautiful? I very much like them. This uh, typical Swiss Tropic strap that they have been using for many, many, many years in the Swiss watch industry too, uh, and has been fitted on diving watches. And that looks gorgeous. That is also feeling really good on your skin. And I will turn it around. This is the backside you see. And besides of uh, looking good, it also really feels good. And since it is briefable, as you see, there are holes in there. Um, the likability that you are going to sweat under it is not as it would be if there won't be, wouldn't be those holes. And yeah, no man is omen, tropic strap. Uh, yeah, the person <laughs> who designed the strap probably thought about the fact that when it is tropic, it's going to be hot and yeah, gave uh, added some uh, yeah holes to be or to make it a little bit breathable when be worn on your skin. 20 millimeter in between the lugs, so uh, that's the distance from here to here. 20 millimeter is the strap tapering. No, it's not really. So we, we are going down from 20 to 20 on this side. And if I turn the watch around, we are starting here with 20. And yeah, we're losing a little bit, but this is not worth being mentioned. It's the end of the strap, but it's not really tapering. So it's 20, 20 on top and on uh, the yeah 20 here in the pin buckle the 50 fathoms has a central second hand uh, minute and uh, hour and minute hand and the date indication at three o'clock and the basal is of course only turning counterclockwise as it has to be with a diver and has 120 clicks uh, when i start i will um, then um, invite you to listen one moment You hear it's uh, yeah, nice, solid, mechanical clicking. 
and uh, yeah, we'll try now um, to readjust it. Forgive me if there are some reflections for a couple of seconds on your screen. There we are. So 120 clicks, turning counterclockwise. This is the basil. And uh, yeah, just said there is a date function and there's a party calority. Um, the 1151, um, a former Frédéric Piguet movement that Blancpain uses with a silicon hairspring these days. 3 hertz, 100 hours of power reserve, I told you, does not have a second stop. So if I go in the second position, you see the second hand continues to yeah, swipe over the dial in the speed of one sixth of a second. As I said, 3 hertz, 21,600 as the oscillation frequency of the balance um, wheel, but no, you see that? There is no possibility of stopping it. So if you want to make an adjustment, for instance, to adjust the watch, what you have to do is um, you will probably, um, the best thing you can do is um, as uh, what you just saw on the screen, um, and playing around uh, by the crown, uh, turning a little bit in the counter sense, and then you will be able to stop it. So if you're waiting for the time signal, for instance, what you will do is you will go until, um, yeah, now, 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 and then turn the hands a little bit back like this. And then when the time signal comes, you just leave it go, and then you can make the precise adjustment of uh, the minutes, but there is no second stop. So, um, I also would want to show you um, the date, so how the date is changing. I just need to go in the position of showing you this. I watch was at set to 10 o'clock in the morning, as I always do. And now we are approaching midnight and you will see, yes, it's not instantaneous, but yeah, semi-instantaneous, I would say. There is an area in between 11.35 to 12.10 uh, when the date change takes place. And um, if you are curious now to see also the other numbers on the date disk, I will as always do a quick, um, a quick run you through and you can discover the numbers. This is the 30th and so on, quickly have a look. So the one digits are, of course, bigger numbers. And of course, now the hand swipes over. Yeah, yeah always the same thing, Murphy. Um, yes, uh, the single digits are bigger. And when the double digit come, it's a little bit smaller, of course. But these are the numbers to quickly show you. And I will go back to the 28 where I've started. Yep, there we go. So let me bring the watch back to 10 past 10 to make it smile again. And then I will quickly uh, yeah, talk about the super luminova being applied on the dial. So loom shot time. This is how the 50 fathoms, no radiations, looks in dark conditions. So the super luminova being applied on the dial is, yes, you have seen that before um, already, uh, is a vintage super luminova. Otherwise, it would pretty much look like uh, on the new um, or the new newer version of the 50 Fathoms. As you can see, it's more a green superluminova. Uh, but um, as this is a watch that pays tribute to a historical watch of Blancpain, um, with its no radiations sign on the dial, um, the, I think it is um, okay. And I think uh, I would have done it the same way. And all discussions, can we, should we use Super Novinova in that color? Is it now uh, to be called this or that way? I would say if you're doing um, a watch that is paying tribute 
to an historical watch in your collection, you may do it. And um, there's nothing wrong for me. Um, it was uh, clearly um, the intention of the designers of Blancpain to get that historical or more vintage look. And then, of course, you do apply a supernova, a superluminova that has um, this or offers this look. So, what is that sign? This is a crossed uh, radiation sign, meaning no radiation. Why is it on the dial? As you know, the 50 Fathoms uh, has its roots uh, in the military. In 1953, the French combat swimmers got the watches and it was them, the military, who asked, of course, and uh, was some of the technical requirements given to Blancpain when they were uh, plan, uh, designing and uh, conceiving the watch that um, yeah automatic um, certain water tightness 100 meters um, uh, basal etc plus of course the requirement that the readability of the watch should be given also under yes difficult conditions and this was only feasible or makeable with um, radium and uh, the material that was applied was radium and radium is a radioactive material and radioactive element used uh, in watchmaking for its luminescent properties. But um, in um, the early 1960s it was declared harmful to health and so Blancpain decided to stop, to no longer use radium on the dial and to make it clear because at the time being, those watches weren't only sold um, at authorized dealers, they were also sold uh, through um, stores that sold uh, diving equipment. And to make it clear that there was no doubt that the new generation of this Blancpain 50 Fathoms did no longer feature radioactive material on the dial, this sign came on it. This sign came on it and this sign is clearly the sign for radioactivity and it is crossed and so it says and clearly shows no radiations and this is a watch that meanwhile is very much or these generation of Blancpain watches from that time are very much sought after and are very collectible. They got very collectible and yeah, this watch is playing tribute to this area of Blancpain divers. Once again on your screen, both the 40.3mm and 45mm Blanc 50 Fathom case. And now you are asking yourself, okay, why are all the limited editions that Blanc uh, is making coming in that, uh, yes, nice, smaller uh, 50 Fathom uh, case? And why aren't they offering just a non-limited edition in this case? So this is a good question. I can't answer you, but it's a strategy. That's how they're doing it. So the smaller case is simply limited to limited editions. <laughs> and that's how it is. But there's one thing I still want to mention. This is, by the way, 45. So you see you see 45 and 40 millimeters, so 5 millimeters meters of difference and yeah this my Blancpain 50 Fathoms is a huge watch I'm wearing it with an auto strap the auto strap uh, adds some more thickness even it's a huge watch but I like it it's a statement on the wrist and um, it's such a cool really cool it's one of my coolest watches I have in my collection and I'm not sure me personally I'm not sure if I would want to wear the 40 millimeter uh, that has nothing to do with the design of the watch. It's just, a, I'm not sure if I personally would want to wear a 50 Fathom in uh, 40 millimeters. I'm not sure and probably not even, I um, have to admit that this uh, no radiations has yeah, some sex appeal, of course. That's a very cool watch with the no, no radiations um, uh, um, sign on the die, but yeah. 40 millimeters, I'm not sure. But um, what, 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 what was the purpose of showing you those watches again? And if you're now asking yourself, okay, why are they always doing those limitations in that size? But at least, and this is something I've, I, I discovered um, because I got the information. 
um, uh, from Wolfgang, uh, Wolfgang Theis. He is brand manager of uh, Blampa in Germany and taking care also of my market. So he was the guy who was enabling me that I get the watch for the review you just see on your screens. And Wolfgang told me, and this is really something cool. Listen, that you know that in uh, 2017, it was the first time uh, in Basel, at Basel World. What is Basel World? Yes, there was once uh, a fair called Basel World. And in uh, Blampa, uh, this uh, uh, showed in 2017 the mill spec the first time. And the mill spec in 2017 was sold for 13,070 euro, including 19% tax. So later then came the Barracuda. The Barracuda was sold for 13,070 euros, including 19%. And now, guess. No radiations, limited to 500 pieces. The price, yes, again, 13,070 euros. So over the years, since 2017, Blancpain could have gotten greedy and said, ah, ha, ha, they are selling well those uh, special editions in that 40 millimeter cases. Now let's grab some money from our customers, but they haven't been doing it. So the watches are stable on the price. They are special due to the limitations. They are special due to the uh, watches they are referring to. You know, Millspec was the watch that had this sign, um, um, this special um, uh, sign on the dial. If humidity was in the watch, they would change color. So the combat divers would know if the watch is still waterproof or not, or if there is any problems. Now you have the mill. Then you have, this was the mill spec, then you have the no radiations, and of course the Barracuda referring to um, the diving equipment manufacturer. So um, all these watches, very special, 40 millimeters and stable in price. And they, yes, on the secondary market are very much sought after too. So it's not so bad the strategy of, the strategy of doing it the way they're doing it. Let's be honest, huh? And if you're now saying to yourself, oh my goodness, I have seen this no radiations sign on a Blampa before. Yes, of course. If I do remember correctly, I, I think it was in 2010 when they did, in that case, in the big 45 millimeters, a no radiations version already once, but as I just pointed out, it was the big or the huge, the new case, and it is now in the original size or in the vintage size, uh, um, the vintage case size that the new um, radiations, new, 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 no radiations, new, no radiations, yes. You can do it, Alexander. <laughs> uh, comes back in a limited edition of 500 pieces. So the watch is, as far as I know, almost sold out. Um, already quite difficult um, to get. Uh, let me show you the box. The nice box, you see. There is some. There are some distortions. Yes, you can now see that. Here is the central second hand swiping over the dial. One last time, the automatic movement, 1151, former Frederick Piguet. Now, um, yes, in a new technical version in uh, with a silicon hairspring and ah, ha, ha, if you think this is probably cheap, tungsten, no way. This is of course gold. The gold simply has been covered for design purposes to, yeah, make the watch look more cooler when you turn it around. Imagine that there would be a huge piece of gold wobbling around. No, but it's clearly marked here, 20 karat gold, but it is being covered with a gray surface, but it is a gold rotor. So not Funkston, if you are questioning yourself, is this or is it not? No, it is not. Yep, there's one little correction I have to make. Um, as you see, I've just been using my Blampa magnifying glass. And what I said before, um, that this is 21 karat is not correct. It's massive 18 karat that is written here. So it is 18 and 18 karat gold rotor that has been covered to look a little bit more decent, as I just said before, not wobbling, a big gold mass wobbling around, yes, on, on, when you turn the watch around. Are you interested in the Swiss watch industry? 
Check out Fontobel's latest Swiss watch industry outlook on fontobel.com slash watches. Let me also quickly show you my 50 Fathoms and that 45 millimeter case. Um, it's basically the same watch uh, as you see. Um, the new or the vintage, uh, the vintage, vintage 50 could call, could be called the baby Fathoms, the, the baby 50 Fathoms if you want to. Um, here we have a lock to lock distance of 50 millimeters versus 45 in the smaller case, 45 millimeters versus 40.3 millimeters. We do also have a boxed glass. Um, same as uh, with the smaller case, um, we do have a um, sapphire inlay in the basil, of course, and what is different, I have a closed case button, so there's no see-through case button, and my watch is powered by the Calibre 1315, 1315, that's a 4 hertz versus a 3 hertz, the 1151 is a 3 hertz. And my, uh, the caliber in that watch is a 4 hertz, so with a power reserve of 120 hours. Yes, you see, I'm wearing it with a NATO strap. It's the way I like it. Uh, with, uh, yep, matching nicely the watch and I'm happy wearing it with an auto. I will quickly unslide uh, to show you the watch from behind second that's not as easy to slide the nut out since you see it's perfectly fitting but this is how it looks from the back side you can see me here hello everybody so this is how they um, yeah sold the 50 um, years ago and I still like it with the clothes or with the closed uh, case bottom I have no problems um, that I can't see my the movement I'm happy, absolutely happy. And you will, of course, also see um, a night shot of uh, this 50 and you will be amazed uh, what you are going to see. This is really spectacular. Looks like if they would have applied some yeah, battery illumination or something like this. Just uh, yeah, watch it, that's crazy. The watch comes in one of these genuine Pelly cases, these are waterproof cases to protect technical material or instruments when you are on exhibitions, uh, expeditions, not exhibitions, expeditions or in, in rough or rough environments. So this is the case that comes with it and it's a little suitcase as you can see you have clips here, you open, second one once again, then you open up, yep, and you can also nicely see 50 Fathoms limited edition and in it there is a travel pouch that is being positioned in the center here and in the travel pouch that you can use for traveling is the watch. Here it is. So that's the way how you buy it and how it is being presented to you when you are at an authorized dealer or in a Blancpain boutique. So you have the travel pouch that you can easily use for traveling, very nice. Also good and uh, nicely, looking nice. And perfectly protecting, of course, your 50 fathoms. There it is once again. Here you have 50 fathoms, limited edition. And here, yeah, let me close that. You can uh, listen, click. <laughs> it's like a safe. You really close the safe. Click. There you go. And this is the little suitcase you get when you buy the watch. And for those who are now interested to know what a uh, Pili case is, I will zoom in so you can read this. Genuine Pili case, Google it and you will see these are specially manufactured plastic cases to protect technical equipment, etc. on expeditions and not exhibitions, as I said before. Oh my goodness. And of course, yes, yes, yes. Blancpain, nicely 
readable on the little suitcase. So thank you very much for watching this little review presentation of that 50 Fathoms No Radiations in its nice travel box and pouch. Um, comments are welcome, your questions are welcome and yeah, let's go into some uh, discussions and if you're asking yourself why I never mentioned that one world describing uh, um, the super Lumi Nova on the dial, yeah, I simply don't like that word, so I'm not using it um, and yeah, I'm sure there will be questions and sure there will be comments coming uh, concerning that uh, used uh, vintage Super Luminova as I call it. Um, yeah. And I'm more than happy to read and read them, discuss them with you and answer your questions. Bye bye and thanks for watching and yeah, stay tuned on Watch Advisor on YouTube. There is lots more to come. Bye bye. Hey, have you packed your luggage? If not, do so. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. You will get the chance to win your exclusive trip to Switzerland.